Please be seated. Good to see each one of you this morning. It's a blessing to be together, as, as I know you know, and uh, appreciate this opportunity to be with you and to study together from God's Word. You know, I, I say this from time to time, and I don't want to ever stop saying it. I appreciate so much the eldership and inviting me to come and be with you on this, on this regular basis. I enjoy it very much. I hope it's a benefit to you. And... Uh, I just enjoy being part of this congregation in that way. Uh, you know, we, it's, uh, it's, you're, you're blessed in life if you get to have one home congregation. And if you get to have two, that's even better. And we feel that way, and uh, we love all of you, and growing closer and closer to many of you as time provides opportunity, and especially so uh, thankful for Case and for Sydney and uh, the tremendous power that they are and the great job they are doing. I think uh, so much of them and I love their attitude and uh, we pray for them, for their work here and of course for this, uh, this uh, new little Britain that's on the way, it's on the way. I started this morning in our Bible class period together a study in the book of John and I wanted to, to share with you some lessons from the Gospel of John as we move through our time together here at uh, East Hill, at least my part of our time together here. And we noticed, of course, uh, already a couple of verses from John chapter 20. In John chapter 20, and I mentioned this in our class this morning, but in John chapter 20, what John does, he provides the argumentation that he is going to follow in the book of John. He says, uh, and many of the signs, as, as was read for us in such a fine fashion, and many of the signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written, that you might believe, and believing you might have life through his name. And then at the last couple of verses of the book, he says, and there are also many other things that Jesus did, uh, of the which should they be written every one. I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books uh, that would be written. The Gospel of John stands as a clarion call to the world of the offer of God's salvation in Jesus Christ. The Gospel of John, as we, as we always say and as we always note, it's a shallow enough for a child to understand, to move about without any fear of depth. But at the same time, it is as deep as the deepest trench in the ocean. And it has things in it that uh, lead us closer to God in a beautiful way, a simple way, but a profound way. Uh, this morning, I'd like for us to look at the first few verses of the Gospel of John and to think about some of the things that are contained therein. If you would read with me in John chapter 1, beginning with verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was, the New King James says, He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was nothing made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. The darkness comprehended it not. The Word is Jesus Christ. Now, all of us in this room, perhaps except for just the littlest children, have studied the concept of the Word of God. Now, we know the Word of God 
We have 66 books. That's the word of God. But of course, here, there is a meaning that covers that and much more. This word of God is the logos. It would be in the English language, L-O-G-O-S, the logos. And Jesus is the word of God. The word logos is, it's just a tremendous concept. It contains in it all the ideas that mankind can approach with our minds and those ideas that have been revealed from the mind of God in such a fashion that there can be an interface between God's mind and our minds. And Jesus is that. Jesus is the one who provided the word, Jesus Christ. He is the essence of deity. He is the, what is deity? People say, what's the word deity? Well, it means godness. He is the essence of what God is. That's who Jesus Christ is. He, before the beginning of creation. Now, this is something that I think is a challenge to get our minds around. But before, where it says in Genesis 1-1 in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Before that, before that, and you know, I'm tempted to say long before that, but that doesn't even begin to approach the concept that we're after. Before creation, Jesus, the word of God, already was. You know, back in Exodus chapter 3 when Moses says, well, who do I tell these people you are? Because in those days, of course, all the gods had names. People referred to them. You know, even the, the, the false gods had names, they had a multitude of names. So God told him, just tell them I am has sent you. I am. Just a, a simple expression, a, a, a noun, I am, a verb, present active indicative, the idea I am. Not I started, not I began, not I'm on the way to being whatever I, I just am. And then in John 8, Jesus appropriated that to himself. But here we see the beginning of it. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Now, you and I, our minds, even the brightest of us, our minds have certain limits. When we want to think about God, we're up against it. It's a bit, one of the biggest challenges that we ever face is to think about our God. And God knew that. He knew it would be hard for us to get our heads around who God is. So what did he do? He allowed for the fact that we would have that kind of trouble and sent his son into the world to be the manifestation of deity, of God, walking among human beings so that people could see who God really was. He was in the beginning with God. All things are made by him. Without him, nothing was made. He was a life, life was the light of men, and light shines in darkness. And darkness did not co comprehend it. See, God wanted us to be able to understand something of Jesus. He wanted us to understand something of him. He wanted us to understand something of the Holy Spirit. He knew that we couldn't take in the whole thing. Nobody can. As a matter of fact, I become amused when I run into folks from time to time, whether it's in print or in the media or in person, that seem to think that they understand fully every element of the aspects of deity. Well, I know that can't be because of the great lengths that God went to to make it possible for us to understand Him by sending His Son to be here with us and among us. And there was preparation made for that beautiful gift. And the preparation is referred to in verse 6 and following. 
There was a man sent from God. This is the preparation for God sending Jesus so that deity, God himself, could be revealed to mankind. This is exceptionally important. This is overwhelmingly significant. That even preparation, and of course this preparation we know about from Isaiah chapter 40, that there was, this was going to happen. So the text says there was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. He was not that light but was sent to bear witness of the light. What does that mean? John wasn't Jesus. We all know that. We all know that. But what was his job? What does it mean to bear witness? To bear witness of somebody else is to tell folks about somebody else. That's to bear witness of that person. Everywhere I go, I tell folks about Jameson Stewart and his wife Ashley down at Hobbs Street. I'm bearing witness to the fact that we've got this young couple. Just like I, everywhere I go, I tell them about Case and Sydney. This bearing witness. I talk about my friends. I've got, I've got new friends in this room that I didn't have a couple of years ago. You know, I know Johnny. I know Joe. I know a lot of people here. It's, a, it's great. I can bear witness to you. You know, I could say, I could tell, you know, Ed Joe Cooper, he likes to sing. And you can hear him. And I, I, I tell about uh, some old school teacher that I met up here and so forth. So, you know, I talk about you folks. You know, some guys that are unique and impossible to ever forget that you ever met. There's one sitting right, right over there somewhere. So you bear witness to people. So what was John doing? He came to prepare people to understand who God in the flesh would be. The text says, this man came from a witness to bear witness to the light that all through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That, uh, that was the true light, the light which was the true light, which gives light to every man coming into the world. That's a significant situation. John came, John the Baptist came to provide a witness to the individual being who would come, God, who would come in the flesh to give light to everybody. Now, what do we need light for? You stumble around in the dark. That's what we do in life without the light, without Jesus Christ, the light of the world. We stumble around spiritually. John came to bear witness of that which was coming to Bring light to everyone. He was in the world, and the world was made through him. The world did not know him. That's the way it is right now, isn't it? You have opportunity to talk to somebody about creation, and you say to them a little sentence like this, Well, I believe that God spoke the world into existence. No, it can't be. How can that happen? How can it not happen? How can the world exist without the power of God creating this world and placing it where it is and how it is? You tell me, well, it's just something happened over billions and billions of years. Hogwash. Hogwash. Makes no sense whatsoever. You mean to say, for instance, would you expect that pew, just the first pew, just a simple pew, would you expect that pew ever to create itself? Would you expect that pew to ever all of a sudden come into being? What about the shirt you're wearing, fellas? Somewhere off in, you know, the Philippines or someplace, your shirt was made. Your shirt didn't pop into existence. The world didn't pop into existence. And you give it all the time that you want to give it. No, no, no. The world rejects the fact that God created this world. But he did. And then Jesus came and says, He came to his own, his own did not receive him. Somebody says, That sounds strange. What's the chronological situation here? What's the chronology here? Well, understand something. When did John write this? Did he write it as it was happening? No. He wrote it after it happened. He's writing history 
that is inspired, true, and holy. And he, he compacts, as a matter of fact, when you go through the book of John, you'll see him telescoping. You know how you take a telescope? You'll see him telescoping and microscoping different things at different times so people can get an understanding of the flow of the entire gospel record. He came to his own, his own did not receive him, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become the children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So the book of John starts up telling us the story that God the Creator created, along with this physical universe, a situation where people who are lost in darkness can come into light. People who can be born again, as he makes plain in John chapter 3, can be born again, not in a physical sense, but in a spiritual sense. That's what happens to us. That's what happens to us when you're buried in baptism to be raised to walk in newness of life. You have a brand new birth. Jesus came to make that possible. The book of John tells us that story. At this juncture, I want to mention to you that whenever I have opportunity and people come to me and say, Bill, if there's one place in the Bible I need to go, you know where I'm going with this case. If there's one place in the Bible I need to go to attempt to understand what you folks are talking about, I send them to this book right here. I said, do you have a Bible? Yes, I have a Bible. Right. What you need to do is get yourself a cup of coffee or a diet sundrop, whatever your poison is, and I want you to sit down with a bright light that uh, you won't go to sleep under, and I want you to read as far into the book of John as you can without going to sleep. And most people that don't read a lot, you read a lot, but a lot of people that don't can't read for a long time. I said, read as far as you can. Put your marker there. It's got a little, that little, that little piece of ribbon in there is there for a reason. Stick that somewhere and then go back to it and keep reading it. And then if, there, if you need to, read it again, and you will need to. And then read it again and keep reading it. And if you keep reading it, if you keep reading it, the gospel will be revealed from God to you, not supernaturally, but through this word. You shall know the truth. The truth shall make you free. You know these verses. The faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Folks, let me tell you something. I didn't believe that. Randy, I didn't believe that. I didn't believe it. You know, Ginger would tell me, well, just read, read, the, read the Bible. She'd tell me to read John. Preacher back, he'd tell me to read John. So I'd read it, and I'd say, well, I don't know. So I'm reading it. Nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. What's supposed to happen? Nothing's happening. I just kept reading it. I kept reading it because a mighty pretty lady was telling me, uh, you want to come see me, you got, to, you got to come to church with me. So I'm, well, I'm, going to, I'm going to have to do what she says. And Now, fellas, don't get upset about having to do what a woman tells you. If a woman's telling you what you need to know to go to heaven, you need to do what she says, right? So I kept reading it. I'm just reading the book of John. And maybe a little in Romans. Reading John. And on Tuesday afternoon, I said, yep, I'm beginning to see this. I didn't see it all at once. I didn't see it all at once. But I kept reading this, and I realized a true fact. My first true fact. You know what a true fact, that's double talk, isn't it? I realized that I'm a human being has a physical side and a spiritual side. And all I had done with all my life was about the physical side. And the book of John showed me that there is a spiritual side. And I, if you think about it, you knew that. 
You knew that before you came in contact with the gospel because you hear a song. For instance, the national anthem or America the Beautiful, what does that do to you? Right situation, make a little tear come to your eye. That's the spiritual element of that, not spiritual in biblical sense, but it's the kind of thing that has to do with your mind and your emotions, and God covers that here. So John came to bear witness of Jesus. And verse 14 comes out of verse 5. And John says, And the Word became flesh. Now the Word from John 1, 1 through 5 is God. The Word became flesh means God took upon himself flesh. There's a fancy word for this, and the word is incarnation. I used to think that word had something to do with flowers. It has nothing to do with flowers. It means that the Spirit of God took upon a, himself a body, a flesh, karna, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. When Jesus took upon Himself, He came, the Creator of the physical world, that's John 1, 2, when He became flesh for us, He was the physical revelation of God in this life, in this world, among us as human beings. And when he, when he came, he came because he, he wanted to help us. God's plan was to help us. But see, we all know that God and Christ and the Holy Spirit are all three God. It is something we learn from the Old Testament that for human beings to wrap their minds around God the Father is a tremendous challenge. They couldn't do it then. And he would not allow them to see him. You know, we got the situation with Moses on the mountain, all that. God, God the Father couldn't allow himself to be seen because people couldn't absorb it. If God had shown himself in a physical sense at certain times and places, he would have eradicated everything around him because of the nature of his power. And we think about the Holy Spirit. Now, a lot of people don't understand the Holy Spirit. I don't think I understand it 100% myself. I don't understand Him 100% myself, but I will tell you this. I know that you tell me about the Holy Spirit, and I read every passage in the Bible about the Holy Spirit. It's not the same, is it, as reading about Jesus of Nazareth standing up, teaching, and working in and out, being around people. He is the revelation of God that resonates with me. What about you? Why do we tell these stories about Jesus, the Bible stories about Jesus to these beautiful children? Because that, that reveals him to them. We take these passages from God's book and we use them to describe our Lord Jesus Christ to children and to old people and to people like me and you. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. The text says, John says, that when God did that, He did it in such a fashion that His glory, the glory of God, could be seen in the man, Jesus. Behold the man. That's him. 
When people saw Jesus in the first century, as he walked among them and taught them in the temple and other places, they were seeing God. They beheld his glory. Glory is the only begotten, full of grace and truth. John said, John the Baptist said this, he said, He who comes after me is preferred before me because he was before me. Now, I think John there shows us the power of understatement. The power of understatement. You know, people think, in order to make an impression, what you do is you overstate things, make a big impact. But John says, no, he's preferred before me because he was before me. As you read the book of John, you read Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and you read those gospel accounts, and you see the things that Jesus did, the way he was treated, sometimes positively, most of the time negatively. When you see Jesus operating in the world during his earthly ministry, I want you to understand something. That was God walking around. And the being, I think, as as I've told you, I got to go over there and walk the streets of Jerusalem. Of course, you're walking on dirt that's been piled up for centuries. But anyway, you often thought, I said, what if if I were to be here back then and round the corner and see the Lord? What kind of impact would that have on me? You'd hope it would be great, and it's, you know, based on what we know it should be. But John put this so simply that anybody could understand it. They look at John the Baptist, they could go back and read Isaiah 40. They knew that what kind of a person this was supposed to be. But he says, I'm nothing compared to what's coming. I'm nothing compared to him. He's preferred before me. He said, for the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, who is in the bosom of the Father, He has declared Him. Christ revealed the Father. Now we we want to think of being able to see somebody with our eyes. Or at least hear them. And we don't get to do that with Jesus. But the record of the revelation of the mind of God in the six section we're looking at, in the Gospel of John, reveals Jesus to us. You know, the, I couldn't have picked out better songs for what I had in mind this morning than we were led in Bryce led us in those songs. When we think about our Lord, we need to spend a little bit of time every single day with one of the Gospels, I believe, of course for my purpose at this moment, would be the Gospel of John, and, and read situations, read about the situations that are revealed in this book that show what Jesus was doing at that time. And understand the objective reality of God in the flesh. On this earth, here for the very purpose of dying, that we might have hope of eternal life. My dear friends, you can study this topic 
and think about it the rest of your life, you'll never finish. I won't ever finish. I don't think anybody will. And I don't know where you are, each, each one of us is in a different place. But each one of us also can allow the testimony of the Word of God in the book of John and in other places, but we're thinking about John. We can allow that Word to declare Jesus to us. That means to show to declare, to manifest, to make it as plain as plain can be in the human experience of who Jesus is. He's God, and he came to die for us. And the way we learn about that is the grace and the truth he has revealed. You know, a few weeks ago, uh, Ginger and I came up when Brother Sane was here and uh, had the Friends and Family Day. And he preached, uh, he preached the cross that day. That was his goal, and he did a marvelous job, I think. But it's things like the cross and the way God chose to manifest himself in Jesus Christ as revealed in the book of John. My dear friends, if I may speak plainly, it's that stuff that's the thing. All the other things we do are important. Having the Lord's Supper when and how we have it, important. Cannot be overlooked. The way we worship God in spirit and truth, singing song, making melody in our hearts, important. Can't be overlooked. Plan of salvation, it's important. All of it is of tremendous importance. If anything, it's of infinite importance but to go beyond infinity to the ultimate reality of spiritual awareness the most important thing is to understand that God was in Christ to die and save us from our sins that's what will keep us on the right path The man that came and died for us is the only man that never deserved to die for sin. Romans chapter 5 teaches us that. So where are you in your life? I know most of you are faithful Christians. I understand that. I'm glad for it. I don't want to live in a world where most people... Somebody says, uh, these churches, a lot of, I said, you don't want a place, no churches, particularly no Lord's Church. But if this morning you're not a member of the body of Christ, in other words, if you haven't taken advantage of God in the flesh dying for you, you need to come in faith and turn away from your sin, confess Jesus as the Christ, be baptized into Christ, to be raised to walk in newness of life. Jesus said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He's the one who died. Follow his instruction. And if you need to come back to him, if you've been with him and been away from him, it happens. Come back. As together we stand and sing.